Move into uh, public hearing items with item number 15. This is City Council District map review, including presentation on four draft uh, plans created by redistricting partners for council. With that, could I have staff report, please? Good evening. Uh, and as you know, this is the fourth out of five hearings. So I will just go very briefly through some of the background. And we will also have Sophia Garcia uh, do the presentation with redistricting partners. So uh, we, we, we've been an at-large <coughs> city council city since uh, 1965. Uh, a notice of violation was received in 2017 of the 2001 California Voting Rights Act. As part of the conditional settlement agreement, uh, the city would trans uh, agree to transition to district elections starting this November. And um, a committee was created. Consultants came on board, redistricting partners, and they've been helping with this process. Uh, we have held workshops. There have been three previous public hearings and a mailing to all uh, residents of the city. Uh, the public has submitted online and hard copy maps of communities of interest and of district maps. Last month, there were three district map district plans that were presented uh, following the fair maps and the CVRA, and uh, they used the communities of interest testimony and dra uh, district maps that had been submitted. From so, here's what happened since the last meeting. Since the last meeting, uh, Plan A uh, was amended uh, per feedback received by the City Council, and it kept District D to the north of the 101 boundary. The plan amended is now named uh, District uh, Plan A2, and it's Attachment A2 for your consideration. It was published in the Coastal View News uh, along with a, he uh, with a not hearing notice. All the maps that were submitted as hard copies have been added to District R so that they could be seen and looked at in detail. And a uh, Communities of Interest map report was submitted by the city's consultants and published on the district election website. Uh, this is the fourth out of five hearings. And in order to adopt a map, a final map, at the March 28th meeting and to stay on schedule for November uh, 20, 2020, uh, November 2022 election, staff recommends that council uh, provide, consider the four draft plans and provide direction to staff and consultants on a proposed final plan. An unchanged final map uh, plan must be posted for the public at least seven days before it can be adopted with a final vote. After the adoption of a plan at the March 28th meeting, City Council will also select the sequencing of elections, which is when each district will be elected, up for election. Uh, and that uh, that's the end of um, what uh, the staff report that I have, unless you have questions, and that but we still have the presentation by Sophia. Any questions? Okay, go ahead. All right, Sophia. Um, I'd like to introduce Sophia Garcia, who has helping us out. Sorry, and uh, has uh, it is, will be also available for questions. Great, um, Olive. Can you guys hear me over there? Yeah, you're a little softer. You can get a little closer to the microphone. Oh, okay. Yes. I can definitely do that. Okay. Is that better? Better. Okay. Great. Also turn up here. Okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, are you able to see the PowerPoint? It just came up. If you could hold on, we're gonna bump up your volume a little bit more here on this. Okay. Side. Yes. Go ahead and give it a try there, Sylvia. Okay, is that better? That's better, thank you. Okay, wonderful, no problem. Um, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Sophia Garcia, I'm with Redistricting Partners. So I'll be going through a, a presentation with you this evening. Olivia gave a wonderful overview of what we've done. 
so far. And so I'll just go into a little bit more and then we'll go and talk about the draft plans that you have in front of you. Uh, so some things we'll talk about, we always like to talk about the traditional redistricting principles. We know this is a refresher for the board and folks who are with us at every meeting, but in case someone is new and like to give any comment, we're going to go over some of what we've done so far, and then we'll get into the current lines, draft plans, and the next steps. So the traditional redistricting principles are our guiding principles when we look to create any draft plans. Uh, you are in a really unique position where all of your draft plans A, B, and C and the revised A2 have all come from a member of the public. Uh, so we just went in our software, um, evaluated all of those plans to make sure that they followed these criteria. Uh, so again, the first one is to create districts of relatively equal size. This one is really referring to that deviation. So ensuring that we're under that 10%. It reminds us that we're using the 2020 decennial census file and we're talking about the total count of people, not citizens. Uh, we're also going to look at districts that are contiguous. So do they geographically touch one another? Are they connected um, geographically by streets, highways? We also look at maintaining communities of interest. So you guys had quite a robust amount of community testimony uh, from the community outreach meetings, the place maps that were sent to all residents, the district or plans. So we had a lot of information to go through, which was a really great position to be in. We also looked at um, following cities and other specific places, and then finally looking at districts that are compact. A note too on this, um, another thing that when we're looking at, at evaluating any plan or modifying any plan, uh, race is not a predominant factor and it cannot be a predominant factor in drawing any district boundaries um, unless legal counsel directs us to do so. And we have not uh, received that direction from your council. And so it is a criteria, but it was not the main criteria uh, that we use to evaluate all of the plants, just as a reminder. Uh, so from how we moved for that community of interest testimony to your draft plans, it's always been a community driven process. Again, your staff has done a wonderful job um, with all of the ways that they tried to have the public be engaged. We've emphasized those best practices, so the traditional criteria. Um, and then also we, at every point in every meeting, uh, seek to receive any feedback uh, from the public and from the council. So for public submissions, again, as Olivia stated, you had the community workshops in the fall. Uh, on Districter, you have over 50 submissions that have been made from the public. You also have all of the draft plans on Districter as well, so that the public can go and look at those. Um, we did the demos of the Districter during the public workshops, and then your staff sent out paper placemats to residents of your city, and we received over 90 placemats. And when we were looking to draft the plans, we had all of this wonderful information to go through. And so we evaluated all of those 90 plans. We looked through all of those uh, district or plans. Um, and we also created that report that you have. And we've continued to do that throughout the process. So any new map that comes in, uh, we are looking at it and evaluating it. Um, similarly, for any district or plans that have come in, we have converted all of those into an atlas format. So they have been made available online prior to this meeting in two different formats in the PDF and the web-based format uh, so that the public can look at that and evaluate uh, the data of that plan and just have more information on any publicly submitted plan. And again, you have that web page to zoom in if you're interested of the street level detail. Additionally, uh, your staff put out a, a newspaper ad, which Olivia was talking about, to inform the public of this meeting. We know that that was the request uh, from the council at the last meeting to try to get more engagement. And they also had the image of the plan that was uplifted, which is the amended draft plan A. So that's draft plan A2. And it had all the information of tonight's meeting, where to comment, 
and how to be involved in the process. So this was a, a really a wonderful ad that, that your staff put forward. Additionally, there's the community of interest map report, which took all of those placemats and districtor plans and synthesized them and also went through and added a little bit more detail specifically on to see if the plans were contiguous or followed that deviation and any additional testimony that was received from the public. So this is a report. Uh, so you didn't have to look at all those 90 plans and those district or plans. You could just go and read this uh, document. It was pretty lengthy, uh, but it does have all that up-to-date information in there as well. Uh, so we have the existing lines, which of course you guys were um, are currently at large with a population of a little bit over 13,000 uh, of total count. And then for your consideration, you do have four plans to consider. Uh, so draft plans A, A2, B, and C. And so council was provided this packet um, with uh, plans that were made by us, but based on public plans to all follow those traditional redistricting criteria. They were also posted to the website prior to the meeting so that members of the public and the council could review those. All of the districts are lettered, they're not numbered. Um, this is a temporary structure for identifying the specific districts because we as your consultants will not be the ones who give the final numbering to the districts. That is, That will be a job of the council to do so, um, to, to number those districts at the end. And then each plan is also created with a less than 10% deviation. Your draft plan A, it has a deviation of 8.2%. It is based on the district or submission ID 95054. And it also uh, mainly uses the 101 as its main boundary. We have the data tables for your draft. Again, we can see that it's under that 10% total plan deviation. Additionally, just as a refresher for our data tables, we have the total count 2020 census data at the top portion of this. And then the bottom portion of the PDF is the citizen voting age population data set. And that's the data set that we look at for um, looking at the percentage of any particular um, specific ethnic group. And here in California, we are looking closer at the Black, Asian, and Latino CVAP um, to see what those numbers look like. Uh, but again, we didn't draw any plans specifically based on race. It was something that we could consider. Uh, but you, again, we're, we're looking at all those other criteria when we were drafting your plans. We came back and modified plan A, which as directed by the council. Uh, this one has a deviation of 9.6%. Again, it's based on draft plan A, which is based on that public plan. Um, this time we uh, had the feedback to really use the 101 as a boundary, so to ensure that all of the District E was south of the 101 and that your District E was north of the 101. In order to do this to stay within the deviation, we did also have to move a couple of census blocks from District C to District E. This plan still is um, pretty high in your total plan deviation, so that is something that we can can look at to uh, try to lessen the deviation, but this plan is uh, viable and under that 10%. Again, we have the data table that you can look at and evaluate. For draft plan B, its deviation is 5.9%. This one is based on the district or submission ID number 93368. It keeps the coast together and it also keeps the northeast of the city together. And when I'm mentioning the ID number on Districtor, um, every plan that is submitted does receive a specific unique ID number. Um, the authors of the maps uh, can also title the plan. So if you're interested in looking at the name of the plan uh, from the member of the public who submitted it, you can go to the Districtor site and look at that ID number. But for consistency's sake, uh, we're using the ID, uh, but sometimes they do have other titles based on what the author submitted. And we have your data table for your draft plan B. And the final plan for your consideration is draft plan C with a deviation of 8.2%. This one was based on a placemat that was submitted by 
Jim Taylor. It keeps the northeast of the city together and also keeps the downtown beach area together. So again, we have your data table for that specific plan. And so again, you have four plans ahead of you. Um, this is still a draft plan hearing, so we can uh, continue to amend any of those plans um, in preparation for your next meeting. Uh, so some of those changes could be, as I mentioned, for the plan A2, so we can look at the deviation. We can look to see if we can lessen that to make your districts a little bit more balanced. Um, we can also look at us trading or looking at specific population between two districts, or we can look at uh, changing the construction of an entire plan. So those are all things that you can discuss and direct us to do so. Um, just as a note though, sometimes not all of the changes are possible. And if that happens, we will come back with a new plan and talk with you through why some changes were possible and why uh, others were not and you have to have some trade-offs. Um, so, and I know Olivia is gonna discuss a little bit about um, the sequencing um, at the end of this presentation, but for what's next, as Olivia noted to you, you have your uh, next hearing. And so for this one, um, we do wanna hear any additional amendments to feedback or if you wanna prioritize a specific plan for your final map selection hearing. And then as a note for the final plan hearing, uh, that map does need to be uh, posted seven days prior to the hearing and there uh, can't be any substantive changes to a plan in order for you all to vote on it at the final hearing. So again, it has to be posted seven days prior and if there are any uh, major changes made to that plan during a hearing, then you'd have to have an additional hearing so that we could post that map a week in advance so that the public can, can look at that plan and evaluate it. Um, so that's the, um, oh, then now I wanna, I think we're gonna move and have Olivia talk a little bit about sequencing, uh, but you do have your final hearing on March 28th. So I'll stop sharing the screen and pass it back to Olivia. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. And um, I don't have a lot more to, I, I don't have any more to contribute uh, for this evening's um, conversation other than to answer any questions. Thank you. you have any questions of staff? Greg, go ahead. I have one I think it might be for Jenna or legal counsel. Um, with the four plans we have before us, do you see any legal issues with the parameters uh, for the map drawing you know, included in the California Voters' Rights Act? Uh, Councilmember Cardi through the mayor, thank you for uh, that question. No, it's my understanding that all of the different maps have been based, have been drawn um, based on all of the legal requirements as Sophia described. So they've taken into account um, the different considerations set forth under the Fair Maps Act. Um, they've included all of the required public engagement and public process. We've gone through all of the public hearings and they also meet that 10%, less than 10% population uh, deviation between boundaries. It, you know, af after this process, after we pick one, uh, how often are there people that challenge it? Uh, or is or is there councilmember cardi through the mayor so that's a really good question um it's my understanding that that is pretty rare so because we've gone through this district election district transition or districting process um a potential plaintiff would have to sue under the federal voting rights act as opposed to the california voting rights act because our transition to district elections really shields us from uh, liability under that act so um, they'd have to their uh, the things that they would have to prove and I could get into that but it would be um, that it's a higher barrier and based on uh, my my conversations with uh, our consultants and um, the demographic work that they've done um, they don't think that that would be very easy all right, Currently, I mean, as you know, populations change, and so that's why we also redistrict 
every 10 years now. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> I do. Uh, Sophia had mentioned that map A2 had the highest in deviation. Um, if either staff or Sophia can share a little bit about what are not red flags to consider, but things to think about if we're going to move in that direction with having, what are the consequences of that? Um, there, it just under the law, you have to have that 10% uh, under 10%. And it gives you that buffer for uh, cities and counties and local governments in order to consider communities of interest, in order to consider um, other criteria that you'd want to evaluate. And so we did look and do some uh, preliminary uh, kind of playing around in the internal software. And there is a way to lower the deviation for plan A2 and maintain 101 as the boundary. So we could just uh, move some census blocks between the existing districts B and D in order to make that um, less than the 9.6. But as it stands, um, it's viable, it's a legal plan, and it's something that you can pass. Uh, we've had other jurisdictions that pass plans with a 9.9% .9 deviation uh, because we're considering communities of interest and um, there's a lot of other criteria. So as long as we're under that 10% and we're following those criteria, uh, then it is a plan that you can move forward with and vote on. Okay, and can you, Sophia, um, quickly remind me of um, MAP B and see what that deviation percentage is? Of course, yes. So for your um, draft plan B, the deviation, total plan deviation is 5.9, and your draft plan C, total plan deviation is 8.2. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, no, I'll wait. <laughs> okay, <I'll, laughs> sounds good. Uh, with no other questions, then I'll, I'll move this to public comment. I have two speaker slips here for this item. First one is uh, Jason Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members, staff. Uh, make it real quick. I'm in favor of MAP uh, A2. I think that uh, breaks the city up nicely, gives an even flow to um, you know to, to everybody being represented. Uh, and Council Member Carrie, I wanted to thank you too for your comments last meeting. Um, you know, it, it's encouraging uh, to to hear our leaders encourage the public to uh, get out and voice their opinions, even on things that they are in favor of or they don't necessarily care about either which way. Uh, I think you have a lot of people who are very strong to say they oppose something, um, but a lot more people who don't necessarily oppose something, but that opinion should get out too. So anyways, thank you guys for reminding us uh, how important that lesson is. Great. Thanks, Jason. Lorraine McIntyre. Hello, council, mayor, staff. It's good to see you all here. Good to see faces, finally. Um, I am in favor of MAP A2, and I'll tell you why. I live on Baylord, and it groups all of us together in Zone D, and we all have very shared uh, interests and issues related to parking, congestion, uh, tr uh, traffic, crime, uh, fire um, evacuation management, et cetera, et cetera. I would be really happy if whoever represented that district wouldn't have to battle with across the freeways issues for our district. It would be really nice to have somebody that would get full support of very popular um, causes because you would have the full support of the community that experiences these shared goals. So that's why out of all the maps, and I see the little looping around across the freeway, I look at how it lumps in uh, you know, District B. Also very similar issues, close to the ag area, close to Foothill, more you know, uh, different issues that they have than the beach community, which I think it's great you know, that C is all lumped together because whoever represents that district will have a full community support for that area. So these are the reasons why I would encourage you to adopt Plan A2. Thank you. Thank you. 
Fred, come on up. Uh, fill out a speaker slip if you don't mind. You know the drill. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, I will echo both Lorraine's and Jason's feeling about map A2. I think, especially when we're looking at the uh, the Baylord project going possibly going forward in the county, that district in particular being together as as D is going to become significant because they will definitely be the most impacted group of, of uh, residents we have in the city. So I would love to see you adopt A2 with minor tweaks. I think she talked about maybe minor tweaks to get below that 9.6 threshold, but still it's under 10%. So I think it works anyway. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, I will go to the online. Hey, Brian? Uh, Mayor, there are no Zoom speakers. Okay, thank you. With that, I will now close public comment, bring it back to the council. Any discussion or if anybody uh, wishes to take action? Yeah, I'll have discussion. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I supported A2, um, but I looked at it more closely and I, I don't anymore. Um, I think that it's the, the positive aspects of A2 are that it does, it does have three Latino majority districts. Um, and, but as, as I bit, did bring up the last meeting, it's got a bunch of little, few little curly cues and zigzags that, that frankly uh, look like gerrymandering. And um, I know that's no, nobody's intention. It just, especially the, the um, consultant, you know, they're acting pretty independently. But, um, you know, particularly the little, um, the little blue arm that goes up from the uh, uh, mobile home park and uh, multi-family districts to pick up 247 people um, up to uh, wherever that is, that little arm that goes up to the northwest. And, um, you know, that, that, that district really, I think that arm really belongs in the single family district and, and so, um, you know, I, that's something that I would like to see cleaned up, especially since there, there were maps that were made that are on the website that are able to, to do the same three pro-Latino districts um, that don't have a lot of zigzaggy lines like that, that don't look like, that, that wouldn't be perceived by the public possibly as being gerrymandered. So maybe if that's some tweaks we could look at when we're looking at A2 to see if we can uh, straighten some of those lines out. Maybe that would be to the benefit of reducing the uh, deviation also. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. Mayor, um, I'm in favor of A2, but I like it the way it is right now. I don't see any gerrymandering at all. So i like to see A2 move forward as is. Any other comments? Yeah, with all the input that that I've received and and I've studied and looked at, um, I like A two the way it is. Also, yeah, um, with A two specifically, I'd like to see tweaks occur and decrease. See if we can decrease the deviation. Because it sounds like uh, the public is uh, in favor of A2. That seems to be the uh, majority consensus of this group, too. Um, I'm in favor of A2. I like the way it's been divided out, specifically to the uh, interest areas. One thing I do like about A2 is the fact that now you have uh, population groups that can control what's happening on the, quote, county side. We, we are very specific as far as influencing in from the county. So that would be one of the major, I would say, protecting factors of the, the voting blocks we're looking at right now. Okay, we've had discussion. Um, at this point, if anybody wishes to take a stab at a motion, we can get started that way. I do, Mayor. <clears throat> I move to receive and file the, pres the presentation and public comments received to date and direct staff to bring back draft plan A2 for consideration of adoption at the City Council meeting of March 28, 2022. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I will second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? 
Does that include tweaks to it or map A2 as is? As is. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I would like to say that, you know, there was a lot of public input on this and, and the folks that turn maps in, everybody feels that theirs is the right map, you know, the ones that turned it in. So this is difficult and there, there's going to be people that don't like this plan and it's just part of this, this process that uh, everybody doesn't agree. But um, I'm trying to do the best I can and uh, I'm not a real big fan of districts to start with, <laughs> but uh, especially in a small community like Carpinteria, but I, I believe we need to make the most of this and make it happen and, and make it successful. And uh, that's why I choose um, plan A2. Thank you. I would also like to make comment that we have had public input. Uh, majority seems to lean towards the A2 uh, mapping. However, it's interesting that we've only had a, a very small percentage of the community actually give their input. When I say that, I believe, what is it, 120 maps or something like that were submitted <laughs> out, of, out of the entire population. So based on the number of the people that have been proactive on that one, I would, I would go with the majority right now, which seems to be pointed towards A2. Um, what, could I make Greg? one other comment? Sure, and, you bet. And I asked legal counsel to cut me off if I get out of my purview. <laughs> get but, that beeper ready. You know, what we need to do is is to get more people registered to vote. And, and a big part of that is, I don't know if this figure is true, maybe staff can correct me, but I heard that only uh, uh, out of all the Hispanic uh, population in Carpentry, only 10% of them are registered to vote. Okay, that's, that's the problem, and that's an issue. That needs to be, um, we, ne we need to get re somehow get a campaign to get them to register to vote. And it, it's, it's, that's a bigger deal than, than this districting, I feel, that, that we need to, to get out there and get people registered to vote. If, if I may, thank you, Greg. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, and I think I remember, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but we, you know, when this first came down, that's sort of one of the things we wanted to try first is let's, let's see what we can do to um, increase participation by doing things like beating the bushes and, and doing voter registration drives and, and outreach to different communities, you know, because, you know, people, people frankly dreaded a, applying this district thing to a small town, uh, you know, so that, that would have been good. It still is a good thing to do, obviously. It does give the opportunity, though, for uh, somebody that is getting interested in, in um, I would say, supporting the city and their efforts in a smaller group. It makes it easier than thinking they have to fight a whole city. So uh, I, yeah, I no, do see district as, as a benefit. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. um, is it correct to say, so we have one final hearing, at which point then we will adopt the final map. Is that correct? That's correct. There is a final hearing, and the biggest prerequisite to the final hearing is that the f a final map needs to be posted seven days prior, and what is voted on cannot be changed from what was posted seven days prior. Okay. So, um, to dovetail off of that, um, that that would be uh, that direction from your council, in addition to the motion that's on the floor, would be appreciated. Um, we will obviously with the motion, um, we will publish map A2, but if your council wishes t for us to publish the other three maps or one of those maps or whatever, let us know that too, uh, if you want that option, um, as a part of your consideration of adopting a final map, or we can just publish the one map. Um, it's a, but that, that direction would be helpful. Thank you. Um. I believe Do we, we have, have take another motion, or what? How does that? No, work? I, we the motion was inclusive of that one currently. So that was uh, we the motion was directed towards A two specific. Correct. Yeah, to C two and uh, that, that's motion on the floor with a second. Okay. Any other discussion? I'd like to put another motion on the floor after we vote for this one. Okay. Okay, um, this motion is still alive, so we'll have to take a vote on this one specific. 
So with that, it looks like uh, we're going to call for roll call vote. Councilmember Alarcon? No. Councilmember Lee? Aye. Vice Mayor Clark? No. Councilmember Cardi? Aye. And Mayor Namara? Aye. That's it. Motion carries. Okay. Um, first of all, we'd like to thank all of you very much for uh, participating. Um, Fred, thank you also. I know you're a big part of it and helped us out get us started on this one. So 